control. Um, they are very mobile children and obviously have very little sense of, of danger and often very little sense of, of proportionate authority through no fault of their own. Um, I know it was expressed by parents at Stanley School during the meeting and I, I can't see it in the notes that it was actually represented, but we had parents stand up and basically say, I sent my child to this school because there were no children like yours in it. I could quite safely send my child to the school and would not be worried that he was going to harm anybody who was physically and medically vulnerable. Um, I think everybody acknowledges that the mixture of a child who's on, on a life support machine with a child, a big strong child who's on the autistic spectrum disorder would be potential for complete disaster and shouldn't happen. And our concern is that by that not happening, that the children will effectively be marginalised or separated out from the main body of the school, whereas at the moment there's no need for that. They can travel through the school at any point in the safely. I have been to school um, where they do mix, where they have a full range of children right very, very part of the spectrum, but the children don't mix. They have four or five classrooms, a whole wing of PLI children with their own unit, their own sensory unit, their own room. And they have to their own outside space and they stay within that room and they make them safe for the relations with the children. That goal is such in size that they can do that and the children can still have the full range and mix and move between the schools. Our worry is that our children are so few in number that they will potentially be marginalised in the school and not have that freedom to move about within, say, two or three different classes. Jim, I just want to have you, have you any evidence of any? Any, anything, anything like this happening where, where I wait, I wait, Can I just finish? Uh, where, where children have been have danger placed upon them? Well, it doesn't happen because it's a mix of the So it hasn't happened? Oh, well, it's not. It's I don't know. I work in San with autistic children, and I can say you cannot mix the two. We have parents of Stanley School children who said the same thing.
Thank you, Chair. My name is Tom Hardy. I'd like to share that Halfway through the, the main paragraph of 
page 80, it says, in conclusion, we have no evidence from Ofsted or school improvement partners that the mixture of children with the most complex needs in our CLD schools leads to any of them to be anything other than safe and happy. Indeed, those elected members at the time from all parties that visited Foxfield and Meadowside were very complimentary about the position. And we have no evidence that we have a gap in our provision for secondary age pupils with complex problems, although we recognize that each year we will have a small number of special needs who require provision outside the world. So I'm just, as Chair of Governors, this is my question, sorry Chair, as Chair of Governors, what was your reaction to those comments that were made four years ago? Um, I met the governing body were not at all happy because the reality of what had happened is as follows. Um, we had got consultation, and to be honest, from my personal point of view, I had to consider the business of all age school. That came from the parents. It came from the parents because they're extremely worried. Having a child with uh, a very low developmental age, uh, mainly through problems and so on, in an environment which they felt was tailor made for them, and moving unnecessarily into another environment which they felt was totally different. Now there is huge evidence for all children of the stress of movement, and that was strongly felt by the parents. One of the parents, for example, went to appeal and got their child after an appeal into um, the Royal School for the Blind Inn in Waverley in Liverpool, which was very expensive. Uh, other parents um, didn't maybe have that capacity to go through a rather complex and difficult appeal process, but we had group parents with the more difficult, uh, more children with more extreme conditions who felt that, uh, and what, we asked, what they asked for was not, shall, shall we have it at, uh, what is it, two and a half to a 19 school. What they asked for was the ability to keep them at the school until there was some evidence that it would be better for the child to move to another school. And it was as simple as that. The director, unfortunately, at the time, interpreted as, close your school down, and this is what was proposed, close your school down and open a new one. And that, of course, would have implication of jobs and so on. In spite of that, the parents actually still supported it because that's what they wanted, the ability to stay in the school until they were 19. Now, I do not think, and the parents did not think that this really answered the question because what we were saying was, let us start with the needs of the real children in front of us. Let us define what the where the life of that child should be in terms of the day-to-day -day life. Now, I've looked, I've spent a lot of time looking at other units, what work, what little work was done in universities, we found a few, and um, to see what the research was, was very little. I do accept that the normal means of provision for their children we're talking about in this country is to just mix them together. I think it's very disgraceful. I really do. I think you have to look, put yourself in a position of one of children. If you're in a wheelchair being sort of guarded all day, it's obscene. These children have to be able to be taken out of the wheelchair if they need to exercise. We all have to exercise our muscles. But most children are self-exercising because they run all over the place. <coughs> but these can't, so somebody has to do it. That means they can be laid out on the mat on the floor, or whatever you call it, so you know, something on the floor, and actually somebody exercise them, they have to have that ability. If they've got limited movement, they have to have to crawl as baby would and so on. Now that provision can't be there if it's a mixed class. It can cross a mixed school. And as was said, some schools, some authorities building, you know, jumbo size, the large um, special schools can have a wing and therefore that is an area just for those children. They would be able to share things like hydrotherapy and so on with other children, but that is a wing for them. Now, you know, this is a basic philosophical question that has not been addressed in any of these papers. It isn't philosophical, it's practical. Do you put them separate? And as we've heard, some schools do even in world, how do you put them, um, or do you put them mix up with others? But if you're going to have them separate, I would contend, and we just need to think about this, to be in a classroom at that age, all day, every day, including your lunch and so on, and the toilets, of course, are part of it, and you're changing. I do not think that is an adequate life for a human being. And I think there are very serious issues in terms of uh, um, human rights in that. But 
but to me, those were my thoughts at the time. But as you know, at the council meeting, if there's a limit for it, you can say it's supplementary and so on. But thank you for the question. So, so four years on, yeah, and there's some of the questions are still being asked and presented to us tonight. Obviously, you can share of the current witnesses that time. Mm -hmm. It's been clearly stated that there's no financial gain to the authority to make the recommendation that the cabinet has made, nor is there any political gain in the cabinet making recommendations. So, why do you feel the recommendations have been made as they are? What's happened is a number of things, and you know, how can I look into the minds of others? Uh, and I am hesitant to give my analysis of what I think of the children's services department and its organisation at the moment, but well, if you want to give because I have no great deal about it one way or another. But what I'm saying is not really to go down that path, but to say this. We, I, and my colleagues, <coughs> for a long period of put forward a good position, and that is a very simple one, a simple planning process. That is, here are children who are actually different than other children. Different in the sense that they've got limited development. There isn't a national um, definition of the kind of multiple learning abilities, but the sort of one that is accepted are uh, children who have never reached that lowest point upon the national curriculum in the start in, in, in early years. It's the best three stages, probably, up to P3. That, that means throughout their lives, as far as we can gather. Now, obviously, some children do develop, and for any parent, they hope they will. But those are the children. We can then look at them and say, what are their needs in the day? Now, some of these children, a lot of them, have got severe problems in terms of health, right? So therefore, um, why do they need one-to-one? -one? They need one-to-one, -one basically, and the numbers have to be one-to-one to give enough people, not one person who have one child all day, but the numbers. It is so that we can keep, or they can keep, the staff can keep this constant watch in case they have a fit, they have a seizure, and so on. And then there's a panic button, and then they're taken up to Arab Park. And there's a whole system, as you can imagine, for the consultants at Arab Park to welcome the children. They've got the records, the records go with them anyway, and the records are in the school. And there are all sorts of systems to that way. And that's how these children are kept alive. Now, um, what we would like to see is a proper analysis of the needs of the children to say what sort of environment should they have, and then um, say, well, how do we provide it? Now, unfortunately, what's happened is that people then jumped at something. They haven't said, well, we've had sort of hints of saying, maybe we could have a unit at, say, LV for all of them, or maybe we could have a, 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 a unit at uh, Stanley for all of them, or maybe at Foxfield, or whatever. But it has to be planned in advance. If it's going to be accepted, and that's the question, that this, I mean, this council has a statutory duty to actually decide what is best. They said, well, we've looked at the children, we've looked at the possibilities, and now, do we have a unit or do we just invite them all over the place? There's huge financial gains by the way of having a unit, because you only need one set of nurses and so on. But nevertheless, that should have been done as a plan that we should have a copy of. Chair, it has been done. Now, that's, that's, that really is shocking that a council is not properly planning for the provision of vulnerable children. It's shocking. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm sorry, I just want to ask a question. Can, can I just conclude my question then? Yes, of course. And, and my comment is this really, and you can respond to it if you wish. Huh? That given the fact that you've been chair of the Municipal and Death School for four years, say, 17 years. 17 years, sorry. But the issue was raised four years ago. Yeah, so seven, eight years. Yeah. And you've been aware of the fact that there's falling numbers and yeah. changes in funding and the like, and that, that again, the council yeah. making no financial gain yeah. out of this uh, respect. And, and we're not proposing any changes until 2016. Do you not think that preparations can be made <coughs> and that you work in as, as per a government <coughs> to bring about the changes that are needed for children to be adequately safeguarded in the First of all, can I say, Chef, that we first, it was the government body for Linda and the first race issue of the funding, because what happened was we were originally a classic school, right? And we had a much broader range of children. In fact, we had some children when we had 